So here now is a demonstration of recording of Skyfall using GarageBand. Now you can see that video on my channel, that famous James Bond song sung by Adele. So here we go. Skyfall loads up my page here. Now I've got all my green instruments up here, which are all the uh, onboard sounds or MIDI tracks if you're using Logic or any other program. So they are essentially code. And then everything down here, the blue is audio files. So I started by putting the drums down. Now you can see that the drums have been edited here, but essentially what you can do is just start off by using drummer as a just something to keep you in time. Once you've settled on a tempo, you're in business. So the first thing that I did afterwards was simply to um, to edit the drums down. So if I just uh, show you what I've got here. that is good enough to record to. I would advise against recording parts or um, piano parts or whatever with just the metronome because you don't get that sort of feel, you don't get that sort of resolution of playing back uh, your audio files to just the metronome. So just striping any old drums down will be fine because don't forget you can put them back on afterwards and actually in the sort of audio world lots of drummers do like to record their parts last over a backing track so that they've got something to play too. So my first job with the drums, if I just go to edit, was that I did quantize everything that I would that I'd played in and I did play this in as well using a keyboard with the uh, the USB kit that you can get, the camera kit. So you can see that all the the um lengths of the sounds are slightly different on this graph here. Sears the end. And dreamt this moment. But the lengths of the sounds have no bearing on the sounds themselves in the drum sense. So I've got uh, also all the velocities are different. If I just click on another velocity or randomly this one or that one or whatever. So playing them in does give you a very, very good um, sort of overall sound without having to, without it sounding all clinical. Even when it's uh, uh, quantized, you can still get a, a good sort of human feel because of the different volume levels. So I played the thing through to the end. Now, I, a slight digression here. We have, uh, if, if I go to the plus symbol at the top, you can have sections. Now, I, as an old school recording artist, I don't have, use sections. Uh, I used to use tape recorders and then hard disk machines from the early 90s, uh, early sort of noughties rather, where it was just, you just recorded from the beginning to the end. And if you wanted to do something again, you could punch in and punch out. So you could actually take out a section uh, and record a new bit there. So I've never used sections on here, but essentially what it does in GarageBand is allows you to record a chorus, for example, and then duplicate it elsewhere. But that is something to be wary of, really, because you don't want exactly the same thing every time. Um, so um, that's something that you can do if you're recording something that you just want to get a really good sort of chorus section on its own and then duplicate. So my next job from this, now I, I did have a good old fashioned piece of paper um, which had my chord sequence on and the lyrics and all that. And I would I'd also written out all my arrangements using, um, using uh, notation. So all of my vocal uh, parts, for example, were done um, just by recording uh, parts. But you can see that I did record in little bits here, um, but they are they are different. Well, in fact, these these are the same as those. I have done a little bit of cutting and pasting, um, but that's you know it's just little bits like that rather than entire sections. So the next part I did was the bass, uh, and I played this in using the onboard bass guitar fingerboard that you can see. There we go.
So you, as you can see, I did a complete pass of that as well. So once you've got your drums and bass down, then the piano can come in. Now, the actual um, the drums here, where I cut them out, there were actually drums there. Um, I had um, just a ride cymbal going um, in eighth notes, uh, if I recall, with a couple of kick drums as well, a bit like the beginning section. No, this bit here. For this is the end. So if I get a, a section here, maybe if I just split that and then take this piece, uh, copy it, go back to here and then paste again, paste again, paste again, etc. I'll just do those four bars so you can hear that the piano has got something to play too. But obviously I want the, just the piano to be there at the beginning as on the record because it's nice and atmospheric. So delete that, there we go. So the piano is, I've, I've used the classical grand piano which is an amazing sounding piano. It's much better than the original garage band one. Um, but the original garage band one is useful in other things. So yes, more sort of dance music uh, orientated, that piano. So my piano part, I played this in as well using uh, using the, the same USB keyboard. And you can see that I've done a complete pass of that as well. So I've really used this as a multi-track machine. So the next part of it, if I just, um, I'll just go into, uh, so you can see the edit window. These are all the chords that I, all the songs, all the notes that I've played in. And, you know, they're all different velocities again. You know, they're all random uh, as per the information that was punched into it. Um, I put on a Fender Rhodes. Now, this is a really useful bit of kit. I used to have a real Fender Rhodes and then discovered that actually I didn't have to lug it around um, all sort of 80 kilos of it when things like the Nord Electro came out, and which was an absolute boon, really. Um, prices are unbelievable for these now. So I just put in a like, nice pad chord so that you can hear the... Um, it just contributes a bit of mid-range overall to the recording. especially with that stereo um, panning. Do I own them? Swept away, I'm stoned. So when you take it away, there's a little bit of space there. Maybe you'd want space, but for me, it's just nice to have that just in the background. The sky fall. So the strings, strings staccato, strings sustain. These are available under the piano banner. If I just um, select that string part, you can see at the top there is a keyboard um, symbol instead of the string one. And this is under the menu of other sounds in strings. So if I just look at that, there we go, other and string staccato. So it's quite a useful thing to have there. Now I played these in as well. I just played the piano parts. So, whoops, I've accidentally gone back to the, the main page. There we go. I'll just uh, go back to there. There we go. And I did the same for strings sustain as well, and then just put parts in uh, and played those in as well. Now, guitar. Um, the purpose of this really was to give a little bit of a solo in the middle. I like my guitar solos. I am a guitarist as well. So, you know, it was kind of a bit of a, a choice there. So um, I'll just play that back for you.
Now, guitarists can tell that that's not a guitar, but it's music. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what a sound is. And to that end, don't worry too much about the sounds to begin with. The, the most important thing with something like this is to get it down, is to get it recorded. And then you can tweak afterwards because you can change your instruments or change your velocities or change the effects. And I've put a lot of reverb and delay on here as well using the uh, track settings here. Yeah, there's lots of reverb and lots of echo and I think probably a few other things as well yeah a little chorus as well just to uh, just to wake that guitar slightly up so if I just uh, solo that so that's without chorus now and that's with so I can play with the intensity and all that. So, there we go. There's my guitar. Now, that takes care of pretty much all of the green bits. Now comes the backing vocals. Now, I'd written all of these out um, with bar numbers, so I knew where to record bits. As you can see, I haven't done full passes here. I've just done uh, little bits. I mean, the lead vocals I just did in sections, uh, just to uh, just to make it easier to record a take. So if I just solo out these parts now, you can see that there are six here. But quite a few different notes. If I just look at the... Um, the beginning one. For some reason that's very low. Maybe I made a mistake and just got rid of that track. And then... Oh, one slightly higher. I decided on having a part in the middle. So lots of this you can kind of add bits as you go along. And the beauty of GarageBand is that you've got these 32 tracks that you can play with. Note that it's 32 mono tracks. If you use stereo tracks, that means the green ones. It actually swallows up individual tracks. So one of these stereo, uh, stereo tracks for the strings, for example, is actually two tracks, not one. So it's 32 in combination. And let's put some reverb on those. I've done the the natural, um, the sort of crescendo. But I, I recorded that rather than automated it. But you can do that. But you get a different timbre of the voice if you um, just record one thing and then vary the volume. So it's always best to try and give it, try and do that as a um, uh, as an effect at the recording stage. Now all of this has been done with the internal mic. There is no other there are no other bits of audio kit involved here. I've, I only had a keyboard uh, hooked up to it. And then we've got the lead vocals. So is the end. Hold your breath. Because of the inherent noise of the internal mic and the fact that it's got a compressor on, you're going to get Art of, you're going to get noise appearing, like hiss. So what I've done is I've actually automated this, and I'm going to show you what I've done here. Uh, automation, there we go. You can see that between phrases, I've turned the track down so that you don't get the noise in the background. So looking closely at this, I'll just open the scale up, you can hear that the, the noise disappears. Here we go. This is the end. Hold your breath and count to ten. Feel the earth. And then I kind of gave up. <laughs> Actually, it's more of a problem when you've just got the uh, just got the piano and nothing else, because you can very easily um, find the. Um, there we go done on the automation you can very easily find that uh, um, you can go really to overboard with this noise cancellation business but once the um, piano has gone as a solo thing and you're adding other things like strings and fender roads and stuff all the that sort of noise vanishes so just to show you the settings that I've got on the vocals here 
the compression. I've actually got quite high, really, because I've just sang really quietly at the beginning. This is the end. Yeah, and the sky fall. You know, I really sort of ramped it up um, afterwards. So there are a few other things here. Th these are all the effects that come with the vocal plugin. Notice I've switched enhanced tuning off. Now, I, it's it's not the best um, tuning uh, plugin that you can get. It can be really chattery, um, but I just decided to switch that off and just let the um, the the sort of um, pitch fluidity come through. Really, so um, effect EQ. That's something that's built into the um, the vocal pane. If I just click that button there, you, you can, can see that there's oh, <laughs> that my voice has suddenly got louder. There we go. Um, tone, that's what pitch e, um, pitch effect or what effect EQ means. So I'll just go back to here. There we go. <clears throat> so there are the lead vocals and there are my backing vocals at the beginning, at the end there. Sorry, at the beginning. Now that is the Korg Monotron Delay. Um, it's a fantastic little thing. It's like a little, it's got a little ribbon at the bottom where you play the keys, as it were. It's got a piano keyboard on it. You can see a demo of that on my channel if you look for Korg Monotron. And uh, it's an amazing bit of kit, but I used it simply as a sound effect at the beginning. And it does tie up the end of the backing vocals and the beginning of the piano part quite well. If I didn't have that... So it's quite nice to have that little thing going in the background there. And I did that at the beginning and at the end. So moving on to the next bit. This is the, um, the, the sort of um, uh, the chorus bit. So if I just solo out these vocal parts. Let the sky fall When it crumbles We will stand tall So it's of utmost importance to get the timing really, really accurate here. And actually I must say that my timing is not great here. Let the sky fall the entry, the let the sky fall, because of the length of the word l, when you're saying something like that, let the sky fall, you have to be quite dramatic with it, but that can actually detract from the realism that you'd, that you'd ideally want from, um, sky fall. from the, the whole backing vocals thing. So if I just bring in the, the main vocal as well, Stand tall, face it all to... Now I've accidentally moved that vocal. It's just... Un ah, there we go. <laughs> that was me getting a little slightly worried there. There we go. But you never have my heart Let the sky fall When it crumbles we will stand tall, face it all together, all face it all together, sky Now I had written a part here as well. Now you can see that the level here is a lot higher than the other parts and that's because I did it as a bit of an afterthought and just thought well actually it'd be nice to have something in the middle there um, just before the verse comes back or before the chorus comes back um, 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 and but you can see that the levels here are much much higher so what I've done is I've automated those you can see that these levels on the side here suddenly dip Oh, there we go. I've just moved that vocal part again. Oh. They suddenly dip when I go to this bit and then come back up for the final stanza. Gather sky fall. And then I've done a separate thing at the end.
So there is a breakdown of my recording of Skyfall and I uh, hope you got something out of that and I'll be posting more videos soon.